Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. It's a pleasure to have today, we have Dustin Maher. He's often called, hey Dustin, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. From, hails from um, Madison, Wisconsin, where I also went to school, University of Wisconsin, go Badgers. Go Badgers. Uh, (laughs) Dustin, yes, representing. (laughs) Um, he's often called America's trainer to moms. He's appeared on network television over 100 times. He may tell us how he did it. He owns and operates five fitness locations and started 90 Fit Mom for Life groups all over North America. He's created, if that wasn't enough, he's created 50 home workout DVDs. He's also the author of Fit Moms for Life, How to Have Endless Energy to Outplay Your Kids, and he's produced the documentary Fit Moms for Life, one in a million. Dustin, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. I'm glad to be here. So I always like to include a fun fact. And fun fact about Dustin, which I was surprised about actually, is he plays competitive ping pong and tournament Scrabble. Yep. So uh, what do you do with ping pong? You, where do you compete? Yeah, so I play, I play at clubs. Um, here in Madison, we have a great club. I was the interest group leader at Madison uh, um, when I was in college. And um, now I, I, you know, one of my gyms I have, I have a, a ping pong place that, that I get together with some, some of the better guys in, in Madison and play. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And it's an incredible workout. People, when they play recreationally, they don't realize that you can actually sweat through your shirt. And if you're uh, saying that, that means a lot. Yeah, it's, so it's great. And I play for a couple hours, you know, each week, and it's a it's a good time. It's such a fast reaction sport that I think it's just great for as someone ages too to just work on that brain brain connection, body connection. Yeah. So I want to talk about the early days, but first, you know, a couple of things that strike me when I do the introduction for you is so you've been on network television 100 times. How did you do that? What were some of the methods you used to, to get on all these avenues? I want to know, and then once you do get on it, how do you know what to say or what to present? Right, yeah, great questions. Um, so my method for getting on was, it, it just kind of like, I just did the traditional uh, press release route. That was my first thing. So what I did was, uh, right after college, I you know I, just, I knew I wanted to start working with moms. And so I, I made a list and I, w- I would have an assistant do it these days, but back then I did myself and just made a list of all the editors, all the producers, all the on-air personalities, all the radio hosts that were female or catered to a female audience. And we had a, a new program that I was launching right out of college called Mama Tone Fitness for stay-at-home moms at free childcare. And so I just sent a basic press release. It wasn't very fancy and uh, it just happened that the one of the women who contacted me was the head news anchor of NBC Morning Show, which was the top rated. And she was a new mom of two kids, and she couldn't lose her baby weight and stuff. So um, she just she asked me to be on the show. It was right off the bat. Like I didn't have to to really do much that first time. And then we became friends, and um, she had me on pretty much twice a uh, twice a month, once to wow. twice. A month. I started training her. I was going to try to train her for free, but she isn't allowed to do that, so she had to pay. Um, That's too bad. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> And so that's how it started, and then. So when you tell me this, when you go on for the first time, are you nervous? What do you say? Yeah, I was definitely nervous that first time. I mean, for those first first dozen or so, I definitely had some butterflies. Um, but what I what I learned, I don't remember exactly what my mindset was that first time, but I, I I learned since then that you know TV, if it's TV that you're going for the medium, they want visual things, of course. They want sound bites. They want hooks. They want um, takeaway messages and they want to provide entertainment and value. So those are the things. So pretty much every time I went on on TV, maybe at least 80% of the time, I brought one of my clients with me. And if I was doing a demonstration, exercise demonstration type, which I did about 40% of the time, I would have them demonstrate the exercises. We'd be able to have them share their story of kind of how they've been transformed through Fit Moms for Life. Maybe we'd show a before and after picture. Maybe they'd hold up their pants. Uh, and you know, they do these dramatic demonstrations of how fit they were, basically. Yeah. And so that's kind of how I, I positioned a lot of my stuff was was bringing on my clients onto the show. But yeah, if you're if you're getting a, a TV gig, you just got to think about how to how is this going to be entertaining? How is this going to be educational? How is this going to be visual? And what sorts of sound bites and hooks can the producers and the on air people use to kind of tease your show? How did you figure out your hook? Um, I mean, my hook initially was a new. A new program coming to Madison that focused just on stay-at-home moms. We had free child care. Um, that was kind of my hook. And then my story kind of played into it of me being the oldest of four kids and just realizing that my mom 
didn't put herself first. She didn't have like a huge support network and I came from this mobile home and didn't have much money so I knew personal training wasn't an option for everyone and so that's kind of why I started you know, Mama Tone which turned into Fit Moms for Life. I don't think I've heard you talk about that aspect of growing up with not a lot of money and mobile home. Do you, do yeah. you talk about it? You know, I, I do use it in my story sometimes. Um, I think it's it's a big part of who I am and, and really helping me value you know money, value the things that matter, you know, even though my dad never made more than $40,000 in his lifetime um, per year. Uh, raising you know six of us, um, you know we we didn't have we didn't lack anything. We may have driven cars that were fifteen to twenty years old and lived in a, a ten thousand dollar house, but um, you know we still had everything else and, and stuff. So yeah, I think it's is a big part of me growing up. So what was it like growing up? Because you had you have three other brothers, uh, two brothers and a sister. Okay. Yeah, and uh, my mom was a stay at home mom. She was a former nurse before I was born, and just a lot of love in the family. And you know they they. One thing that they really taught all of us kids was, you know, we could do whatever we wanted to do. I really appreciate that because I, I hear so many families, par you know, parents pressure them to be a lawyer. Or, you know, my parents, my dad didn't really graduate college. Like, my parents didn't pressure any of us to go to college. They said, it's probably a good idea, but if you want to go a different route, that's totally cool with us. And, and I always, like, this was our biggest cheerleader. So I think that was a, a big role in everything. And I certainly didn't learn entrepreneurial skills or anything growing up necessarily, but they just really, like, said whatever we wanted to do, you know, we would do, we could do and they would support us. So was your dad in something fitness related or just not at all? Uh, he worked for a uh, Cargill animal research farm. So he worked on a farm. Yeah. So. So, so how did you get into fitness? What got you started with that? Uh, I mean, I was always kind of athletic. I was a decent, decent, decent athlete growing up. Um, then I had a, a knee condition called OCD, osteochondritis desiccans. Mm -hmm. And it basically, halted all sports, it did damage the disease for those of you who don't know and uh, so I couldn't play sports my senior year and, and sports was one of my biggest identities in, in life growing up and so it was really really hard and uh, so I picked up a little bit more weight training uh, during that year when I couldn't really use my legs uh, just kind of focused on upper body, really liked how I was feeling and stuff and I always ate healthy. My mom did uh, teach us really healthy eating habits which is another reason why I'm really passionate about helping moms because the moms, of course, set the standard and yeah. set the, 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 the they work. control everything in the house. They yeah. do, yeah. And, and I just like looking back now, I mean, all four of us kids are really healthy. I'm probably the healthiest of them all, but we all work out. We're all very fit. Um, and I think that, and we all eat anything. We, there's, you know, so many people are picky eaters and stuff. And I mean, there's literally nothing that we really won't, won't eat that's, um, out there. So it's uh, I think it's a huge thing like my mom was really good with nutrition and, and stuff what did the early days of your company so this you started right or during school yeah I was still in school I um, I started so I, I was actually a weatherman first that was my that was really my, yeah meteorology was my major starting that's why I went to Madison it's a great program here and that's uh, another fun fact that yeah <laughs> after my freshman year um, my love for fitness and health was increasing and some of the classes I was taking for meteorology were not as exciting as I had hoped. And um, I started to, to uh, job shadow some of the uh, meteorologists in Minneapolis, which is where I grew up. And I like idolized these guys. And um, it was just like it wasn't as glamorous as I thought it would be and all this kind of stuff. What did and you see? What did you it, see that wasn't glamorous? It was just like the behind the scenes. Now that I do a lot of TV, it's just like it's, it's not a cool – like. It's an old building usually, and, and you're just sitting in front of a computer for seven or eight hours, then you go on and do your two-minute bits, and then you come back, and the hours suck, and, and you have to start off in small little locations usually. And I, I just, it was, it was waning a little bit. I still love the weather. I'm so passionate about it. Every, every day I look at the, the radar and, and take a look at things. But, um, and then I read the book Purpose Driven Life, which was a really powerful book for me. And um, one of the chapters, it talks about like, using your God-given abilities and gifts. And I realized that my God-given abilities was not being on camera. I figured I could I could learn it, which I have, um, but it was more just like interacting with people and and one-on-one -on -one and small groups. And so I made that really difficult decision. And maybe it's a lesson for everyone: like, just because you've you've said you're going to go and do something for a long time, that's become part of your identity. Being a weatherman was part of my identity since first grade. I really, not, first grade. First grade, big snowstorm. We had three feet of snow. It was the Halloween blizzard of. Uh, what, 2001, I think it was, and uh, ever since that, I want to be a weatherman, but, uh, so it was really hard to, like, you know, tell everyone that you're going to do something, and then yeah. you fully switch, and my parents, and again, I felt awful, because my dad spent, you know, hundreds of hours trying to get me to Madison and stuff, and 
but they were supportive. They're like, if this is what you feel like is is right, and so I think that's a big lesson is is if your heart's telling you to to do something different, just you know, go with it, go with your gut. Yeah. So what did the so when you started in fitness, what did the early days of the business look like? Yeah. So I was in college still, and um, I started cleaning machines at the at the campus. Uh, as a fitness consultant, but it really just meant machine cleaner. And then from there, I, I worked my way up. I started teaching some classes. Um, I suggested a core class because there was no 30-minute core classes, and I was obsessed with abs at the time. And um, so they, they let me do that. They let me teach, build a curriculum out. So I was starting to build some leadership skills. And then I started, um, this, they had a personal training program they were launching. So I did that and got certified as a trainer through ACE, American Council on Exercise. Uh, had tons of clients while I was there in college because it was a new program and we had, there was less, you know, few trainers and a lot of clients, which was great. I could really see who I wanted to work with. I did, at that point, I didn't know I wanted to work with moms, but just through working with probably four or five dozen clients, I realized that I was really enjoying that. So fast forward, I work, start working at a, uh, at a health club nearby um, my senior year, just doing a little bit of teaching classes there and doing some fitness assessments. And then once I graduated college, um, I really wanted to, to do this program for stay-at-home moms and kind of create a program I wish my mom would have had. And um, I'd made a few contacts before that, you know, and so I think I, I collected all my Gmail emails I've had over the course of a few years. And I think I had maybe 50 or 75 and launched this program. I was going to do like a punch card system or, or they could do a monthly fee and make it about $10 a session. Um, and my gym that I was working out of allowed me to have um, non-members to come in and use it, which was awesome. And we just did a revenue split. So that's how it started. I found this one girl who babysat for almost an entire neighborhood of moms. And so I started off with about five core people. Those five ladies were my first group. And um, So do you offer that? Because you say free child care. So how did that work? Yeah, so at the beginning... Because that's pretty genius. I mean, obviously that's a big... You right. recognize it's a big obstacle for someone to yeah, come it's see it. Yeah, hugest obstacle. So, um, Supreme, the the place I worked at, they actually had childcare there, and they allowed me to oh, nice. until two or three years later, we over inundated their childcare system, and it was like I forty kids piled on top yeah, of exactly. each other. So it worked for a few years. Um, so they 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 gave it to me for free, which was was great. So were you learning from someone this early on? Did you look up to someone in the fitness industry, or did that come later? Yeah, the first like six months to a year, I think it was pretty much on my own. Um, Pat, Nick, and Jim, uh, those guys, Pat, Jim Labadee, and, and Nick, uh, Nick Barry, and, and there's a few others that were, I kind of, I think, started to like read their blog at that point, but there wasn't much there. Um, and then and then I started to learn like the PR side a little bit, kind of started to read some stuff on how to get in, on the news. Um, so that first year, I was sort of on my own, sort of dabbling a little bit and reading and and I didn't again. I didn't know anything about business. I didn't know that moms would be a great lucrative market, you know, or a good referral source. I just kind of followed my heart, and uh, and I knew at some point, like I couldn't just be a one-on-one -on -one trainer. I knew that there's, I would burn out. I wanted to help more people than twelve people or whatever a day, and uh, I could. That's only a long so. day. That's a long day. I was one of the work long hours, and I, I still, you know, I did, and I, I do sometimes still. Um, but I, I so I knew I needed to, to replicate at some level. But at that point, like my knowledge is just funny looking back on it. I was like, I'll have grocery tours and I'll charge ten dollars and I'll get ten people in those grocery tours and I'll make a hundred dollars an hour. And I was like so excited about this. And I still do those types of things. I do grocery tours all the time. But So that, what do you do on their grocery tours? I just like teach people like how to read labels and how to go around the store and, and shop efficiently and, and figure out like how because the manufacturers try to trick you into thinking things are healthy and and so, yeah, we just have a, a, a big list of things. It's, I love doing it. It's one of the most powerful things I think I do. What's one of the biggest misconceptions that, you, that people are surprised about when you go through one of those tours? Um, I would say yogurt is a big one. Like, there's so many different crappy yogurts out there that have fake sugars in them. Anything that says light or low sugar or no sugar is bad for you. You know, get a Greek yogurt. Ideally, plain would be a great one. Mm -hmm. um, the the fat sections, like the butters and stuff, you know, so many people go for the, I can't be, believe it's not butter or margarine or whatever. You know, just look at your ingredients. It should say cream and salt. That's it. Um, and what else is there? I mean, tons of things. Uh, breads is another one. Uh, you know, look for something that's 100% whole wheat or Ezekiel bread is one of our favorites, which mm -hmm. is um, in the frozen section of most grocery stores. Yeah, nice. So when did you kind of branch out on your own from the, the gym you were at? 
So actually, uh, up until four months ago, I was there for nine years. Oh, really? That gym. Yeah, we had a great relationship, and it was one of my locations. I mean, I, I grew it to 11 locations, and now I've kind of refocused and consolidated a little bit. But yeah, I, I love them. They they treat me well. I kind of used did a rental agreement, basically. So I, I just paid them a monthly fee, and, and uh, it worked great. Um, but then I opened up a, a big transformation center now near near that place. So tell me, what was a big turning point from when you started your first location? Because I know that you said you 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 had up to eleven locations. Yep. Well, a couple of things. I mean, I, the TV was a good thing for me, certainly. Just getting on that consistently. A misconception is people think they'll get on one time. I thought the first time I got on, I was just like so excited to go check my email. Five minutes later, I was like, I'm going to have fifty people just wanting my to get throw me money. Now, I mean, I might have had two or three people send me an email. I don't know. But the consistency certainly helped over time. Um, speaking, I did a, a lot of public speaking. You know, I tell I, I coach coach you know personal trainers and stuff, and and whatever you're good at or or want to get good at, like you should do that. You know, so some people love to be on the computer and, and hide behind it. I don't think as a trainer we should be hiding behind the computer all the time because it's an in-person type type gig. But right. you know, whatever you're good at, if you're good at writing, write more. You know, if you're good on camera push your videos on YouTube or whatever. So I, I was okay at public speaking and I wanted to get better at it. So I, I found every single mom's group out there. and I've spoken in probably at least twice, at least just about every group out there. Um, that was a big thing. Uh, starting my website, blog was a huge thing for me. Just building my, my list, my email list up. I mean, just kind of one-on-one internet marketing stuff. But that really helped was that, that email list early on. I mean, my blog used to get like, 30 to 50 to 100 comments on a good blog post. Wow. Now now blogs just aren't getting comments, period, anymore. Um, very few, I should say, are. so. Um, Except but, yeah. when I publish this, then we, exactly. should, we should get a bunch. <laughs> but uh, those were those are some of my, my main ones. Um, and then I rode the Groupon wave for the couple years. Um, that's pretty much dead now as well, Living Social, all those daily deal sites. But I rode that wave nicely for a while. Um, what was the hardest, uh, I guess, when did it become easier? Because opening a new location is not easy to do because you can't beat all of them. Obviously, you're training and hiring people. When right. did it, when, at what point did it become, I got this type of? Yeah, it was probably about three years into it, three to four years when I had really good trainers working for me that I trusted. And, um, you know, I was on TV a lot. I was writing a lot. I was speaking a lot. Groupon was right at the beginning when it was really hot, um, and so we we're having so many leads come in that we really didn't have to do too much to to sell them. Um, you know, we're converting a pretty low percentage of them, but there was still enough to to do fine. So for that, yeah, for a couple of year period there, I would say it was it was pretty smooth sailing. You know, yeah. you have a drama every every month or two or three, right. you got some big fires. But so tell me about because it's not all so easy to find good people, hire and train them. What did you find worked? What didn't work? Right. Um, well, I started doing internships, so I got interns from Madison to in my kinesiology program, um, and then you know I might get five a semester, and I would find maybe that one gem and and hire them afterwards. So that was good. Um, half of my trainers, maybe three fourths of them right now, are former clients of mine. Really, really big, yeah. So I've had like a few of them have lost fifty to seventy pounds themselves, and now become oh. certified trainers. I've certified nineteen of my clients. It's probably one of the most proudest things I've done of anything I've. You know, to have 19 people transform their lives that much that they want to get certified. So, um, That's so, huge, yeah. So internally has been a big one. A couple were friends from college that I'm still, you know, we, they're still my trainers. Um, now I've got a pretty, I've got a team of about 20 now. So not just trainers, but staff. And, and all of my staff have come through my programs. So they've done it for a year or two and really just, you know, drank the Kool-Aid and, and really believe in it. And and want to kind of you know give back because even having five interns is a lot of people to manage and and train what what yeah. methods do you use so you keep it streamlined so you have to spend more time training these five people than training the, yeah, the clients the wasn't too intense like they just had to have 96 hours with me so basically i would have them come and 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 teach classes with me i mean that's really like and i would spend an extra 10 or 15 20 minutes before or after class just sharing what i did why i did it how I did it, answering questions. So, you know, I haven't really had those things where they've spent, you know, eight hours a day with me 
Got it. So they shadowed you and you kind of... There was a lot of shadowing. You know? And then I would implement them into the workouts and like say, all right, you're 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 doing the warm-up today. You're doing the, the core core section. Yeah. So, Dustin, tell me what, um, I guess, from running all these businesses, creating DVDs, you know, documentary book, what's um, a big mistake that you learned from? Yeah, I think one of the mistakes, it's been the last year or two, I would say, that I've been feeling it more or realizing it, especially last year, um, it's just not reinvesting in my business as much as I could. Um, I, I saved a lot, which is great. I think keeping your overhead low is, is very important, especially starting off so you got good cash flow. And I invested in myself heavily. Like I, I, I spent at least, invest about $50,000 a year in my own coaching. So I get coached and mentored. So that's a huge part of my life. So I, I do invest, but you know, just everything else. Like I, I haven't really done much paid advertising, which again for a while I didn't really need to, but now you know times are changing and stuff, and and boot camps aren't really hot anymore, and coupons dead. So um, you know you got to find other ways to generate. So I would say you know just making sure you have a plenty of different lead gens going at all times. Um, I mean, systems is a big one. I'm still trying to learn that and, and try to like create processes and systems now that I have more people working for me right. and they're more part of my daily life. Like, you know, my trainers, a lot of times they just show up, they teach their classes and we keep them updated on what's going on. But now that I've got a team of about eight people who are kind of like there every day, you know, six to eight hours a day at different you know places. I have to like create systems and, and stuff, and it's it's still been a struggle. So I think systematizing systematizing earlier on would be a good yeah. thing. It's a non sexy stuff that actually it works. Yeah, yeah. So not. what did you find with with systems that once you implemented it made a huge difference for you? That you you're surprised you didn't implement it earlier. Just like the follow up sequence of how we communicate with the customer. You know, we're really trying to find ways to add value and to really like wow them you know so like if it's on the first day they get a call from me or my assistant or they get a thank you letter five days later uh, with some referral cards in there something we haven't implemented yet but I want to is like every time we have a new person we we deliver like some balloons and stuff in a card to their to their to their work so that everyone else sees it too and right congratulations sort of thing so those types of things uh, just the follow up sequence and making sure that they're that first month or two that they're really like kind of being put into the community. Got it. So, so. have that onboarding like down pat so you have whatever yeah. you're going to do with them. And it's not just like a follow up email sequence that can be part of it, but there's different touch points and different things we send them and give them and acknowledge them. Yeah, and that's like it's really high value. You know, they see it and they're they're used to getting an email but they they're not used to getting balloons at work. So right. Exactly. But then you're going to get in trouble with the husbands. You're like, Dustin sent me balloons at work and you don't send me anything. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Have you had any um, kind of, I don't know what the, the right word is, not pushback from, because you're spending you know, your time with these these moms and they're spending time with these good looking fit trainers. Do you, <laughs> have you gotten yeah, any situations I, I, like I, that? I hear stories here and there, but I I haven't had any like attacks on me or anything. Okay. So I haven't had to defend myself. I'm not here to raise drama. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just curious, you know, because that that comes to mind when you were saying that is, you know, yeah. You're... Well, I I hear more like, like the, the 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 moms and the kids or whatever are always talking about me or my DVDs and and the husbands get sick when they're they're bringing up my name in bed more than, than right. the husband's name and stuff like that. I I do hear that those stories. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so. Tell me what's um, what's a big lesson you've learned from from running all these businesses and and working with all these you know the clients and also trainers. Yeah, gosh, there's so many. Um, I would say, I mean, I, I'll give you a couple real quick. So yeah. I think finding a mentor is huge. I don't think I would. I know I wouldn't be where I'm at today um, without having coaches. And I've had different coaches throughout the process, which I think is one of your questions maybe. So yeah, can... go ahead. Tell me uh, about some of the mentors you've had. That really yeah, made so the first one I said, Nick, Pat and Jim, like they kind of like opened my eyes up to this other world of like actually building a business. So they gave, kind of gave me a little bit of structure basis. And then, um, Ryan Lee, uh, who's kind of like an internet marketer now, but he used to be more in fitness. Yeah. When I kind of, uh, actually my boss, um, at, at Supreme, the gym, she gave me this book. It was his millionaire workout book he just wrote, and this was like six years ago. And she's like, 
I don't know, I get this guy's emails, it's kind of annoying, he sends a lot, you know, a lot of stuff, but here's a book, you seem kind of interested in business stuff, and so I read it, and basically I was talking about how to use your, how to sell your ideas, and your programs, and, and written stuff, and I, I never had thought of that before, and, and so I went to his, like, boot camp in Connecticut, and did that, and then I, um, you know, stayed on his newsletter list, and I think I maybe went to another one of his, and he launched this mastermind group. And I had never really heard of a mastermind group before, and it was ten thousand dollars. I was probably about eighteen months out of college at this point. I was a big saver. I was really big good. investment. Yeah, big, I I think I had like fifteen thousand dollars in savings at that point, and I was like, oh, was, was, that check hurt. But you know, I believed in him, and and he wanted to help you know sell your knowledge, and and I wanted to create DVDs at that point because I already had maybe this was two years into it, and you know people are emailing me from all over the country or whatever, or even just outside of Madison wanted me to create programs for them and I just couldn't really do it right. I didn't want to write them out. So long story short, we had like 17 people in that group and we met three times in Connecticut and uh, within within three months I had the Fit Moms for Life monthly DVD program created. I think five months into it, I, we, we launched it and then within at the seven month mark, so two months after launching it, um, it was already bringing in 10000 a month. Wow, uh, just from that, that's so, amazing. Yeah, so it was good. Like I, had, I had added a lot of value through my newsletter for a couple of years. So I built up a following that was interested in in that type of thing when I launched it, and so that was great. And that really kind of helped set the stage for giving me confidence that if I do follow someone's advice, you know, and I, it can ROI. So from there, I went to Abedros Koulian uh, with PT Power. And I became pretty much his top student for two or three years, and was in a couple of his mastermind groups, and was his was his big success story. And then I, um, then he went to Joe Polish's twenty five k group. That's where he went. So I was like, well, I want to be where where he goes. Right. So I started going to twenty five k, and it's twenty five thousand to be part of it. Um, and that was great. I did that for a year and a half. And then towards the end of that, um, everyone in twenty five k it seems like was in strategic coach with Dan Sullivan. And um, so I started started with Dan, and Dan's got a lot of different coaches, but I was able to uh, coerce my way into his personal group in Toronto. So I've been doing that for a year and a half now, and um, just super high level group of people. I mean, it's the highest level business minds I've ever been around. Uh, and so yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at with my with my. No, I love that. You know, I, I do a lot of po- listen to a lot of podcasts and read a lot of books, of course. Yeah. So yeah, I messaged with Ryan tomorrow, so I'm going to tell him. Tell me you mentioned him. Yeah. Um, so what, what books do you recommend that you uh, would someone should start yeah, what, with? What, what topic? Business. What, what specific business uh, topic? Let's see. Um, marketing, let's say. Marketing. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm a huge Seth Godin fan, so I, I think he's great. I really like how he really encourages people to step out and to be a leader in whatever capacity. So I think Purple Cow and Tribes are, I mean, those are two highly, you know, recommended books that a lot of people do, but those have both been really big books for me, just trying to like set myself apart from from everyone else. Um, I did that with boot camps, but now boot camps are everywhere, and so, you know, we're launching Fit Moms Transformation Centers here in Madison, and and then with the Fit Mom community groups around the country, which we have 90 of them now, we're really focusing on, it's kind of like a P90X type program, but it's done you you meet in groups kind of like a church group would meet and so that's kind of how we're setting we're, that's how our purple cow is and and um so those are two two good books what are some other good ones that i've read recently you know i've read a lot of books such as on leadership uh recently and then also creating movements because that's really what i'm obsessed about now is how to create, create a movement yeah yeah how to create community how to create movements and um I'm going through a, a course right now. It's just it's a live course um, that Jonathan Fields is doing. It's called Revolution U. Amazing course, and uh, it's just like how to create a movement. He's got this 18-step framework. He's he's been working on the past few years, and and um, so I, I look at a lot of church books. Um, Purpose Driven Church, which is Rick Warren's first book. Dan Kennedy calls it one of the best marketing books of all time. Hmm. Um, but it's it's just how he kind of created the. The, the web, the network that he used to then launch um, Purpose Driven Life, which was, you know, besides the Bible, one of the, the number one selling books, I think it sold like 60 million copies now or something. Wow. So those are some great books. Um, but just so like tell what, me, so your mission, your mission is? Yeah. So my mission, my, my, I don't know if I say short term, but a couple year mission is to um, 
help one million moms uh, live a happier, healthier, more connected life. And then, like I mentioned, we launched about three months ago um, with, with about 90. We've grown to about 90 groups around North America, but my goal is to have 14,000, so we've got a few more to go, uh, which is one for every McDonald's here in America. And, uh, and we just, Fit Moms for Life is a brand that, that's all about, <clears throat> you know, helping moms, again, be fitter, happier, healthier, and more connected. So however we can do that, you know, we're coming out with a supplement line, we're going to do some, you know, some, some apparel, and we're going to go down different, different avenues, but really just inspiring and motivating moms to put themselves first, because that's yeah. kind of a message. If, if you don't put yourself first, who's going to? And uh, you're going to be a better person, a better mom and, and stuff. So what's one of your favorite transformation stories? We talked you know, a lot about the business side. Let's right. hear about you know, what you're really doing and why you're yeah. doing it. Man, there's so many I could choose from. I've, I've literally worked with over 6,000 people live and, or in person and tens of thousands more. But um, Well, one of the stories I've been able to see really up close and personal is this woman named Michelle. And Michelle, she's in my documentary as well. And she, um, she was in her mid-40s, early 40s. And when she saw me, started working with me and... Um, Soon after she started the Fit Moms um, in-person classes, she uh, got pregnant with her third child. She kind of left, didn't really see her, kind of forgot about her. And then uh, about six months later, I received an email from her saying, hey, Dustin, um, my email that day was looking to lose your baby weight or something like that. And she says, this was great timing. I, um, I just delivered my third baby three weeks ago. And I don't know if you heard or not, but my husband was killed a couple months ago in a car accident. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, while well, I was pregnant on New Year's Eve. Wow. And she's like, I I need to do this for myself. I need to do this for my daughters. I got three daughters now. And she was about 40 pounds overweight. And um, she's like, I don't care what it takes. I'm, I'm going to do it. So I was like, all right. And uh, so over the course of like that first year, like she showed up three times a week, never missed. She works a full-time job as a lawyer. And, um, and you know, three she got kids. three kids up in the morning from – from three months old or whatever to five years old, four years old, and um, you know to school, pack the lunches, all that kind of stuff, and uh, she lost those forty pounds, and um, she just got really connected with the Fit Moms community, and you know her life obviously was never the same, and um, so that's that's a pretty it's a pretty powerful story just to see that her why you know I always get people to try to figure out like what's your big why, mm-hmm. and obviously for her it was being around for her daughters and her daughter I think the the five or six year old would always ask her, "Are you gonna die like Daddy did?" Oh, so geez, that's she's that's really like, heart wrenching. Yeah, and so she's like, you know, she's like, I have no plans to. I'm I'm working at being as happy, or as healthy, and as fit as I can. So I'll be around for a long time. And oh. So that story is just so so powerful. Yeah, a lot of different levels, and and you know, it really shows anybody like if anybody has an excuse not to work out or find the time for it, like it's hard. Right. But yet she just she made the time. Yeah. No, thanks for sharing that. That is powerful. Yeah. What's been, it still seems like from early on from the business, it seems like there's been a real upward trajectory. What's been a low point or a painful moment? I would say it's been almost more recent, to be honest. Like within the last like maybe maybe year, um, I the, just the boot camps in general, just that model is just not in the Midwest, is not like it used to be. And the Groupons and all those t- types of things were are were on a downward trajectory too, and so I was relying a lot on those those two forms, um, and I wasn't doing as much TV anymore. wasn't focusing that I was focusing a lot on Fit Moms nationally, so my attention was there, and and then I got the opportunity to get this beautiful, almost seven thousand square foot uh, new transformation center, and so. Uh, just that transition, I would say, and and seeing you know numbers drop just a little bit before that, and and then investing so much time, energy, and money into this new place to get it up and running, and and then you know hiring almost doubling my staff overnight, and and so there's a lot of a lot of challenges, a lot of stress that that went with that, and it, it first of all made me thankful for the seven years prior to it that I never had to clean, I, I never had to clean a building, I never had to worry about the heat, right. Uh, and it's like there's so many things that I was just like, wow, I was, I'm very blessed. Um, but you know, things change, and you gotta, you gotta change things up. So, so yeah, like we're launched. We just launched um, our personal training program, which is groups of two to three or two to four in the facility. Yeah, and congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you. And it's it's done amazingly. I mean, we're just still in the, in the assessment sign up period, but it's been massively successful already in the first week. So, you know, just having other offerings besides you know our typical programming has been. Is, is good and I think we'll continue to grow things. 
So who's your go-to person mentor-wise? Because when you double your staff and you grow to a 7,000 square foot, which is massive, yeah. who do you call upon for advice or you know things that you should be, you know, should be doing? Yeah, I mean, so I've got like a group that was with Bedros's. We were kind of like, we took like the highest level of the mastermind group and there's about 13 of us guys and well, one girl and um, we have a private Facebook group and literally like we're on there every day chatting with each other, calling each other up if we need help. So that's been one of my groups from a, like a boot camp or, or in-person standpoint. Yeah. Um, Dan Sullivan and his kind of strategic coach kind of programming, that's good for like I want to say higher level stuff, but just kind of bigger, bigger type thinking. So I certainly use that, but that's not for like the, the minutia sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's mostly just relying on my past experience. Uh, you know, I've done this for nine years now. And then my friends who are kind of in the same, same boat as me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, talking from the low point, tell me about one of the proudest accomplishments you've had. Um, a couple of them. I think the, the documentary, I released that to a sold out um, theater. Is kind really? of really yeah. It's oh, called wow. Sundance. So Sundance is kind of like our high end theater in Madison. And um, yeah, I packed out with like two hundred twenty people. And I know where Sundance is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hilldale. And um, so just having like my family there and all my clients, my trainers, and you know, it's is a full feature. It was very well done. Um, that was that was a pretty proud moment. Um, How long a, did it take you to put together? It was a, a year. A, it's like 14 months, 15 months. Wow. So I hired um, uh, Jeremy, this guy, he's uh, with a CBS. So he's a, he's a filmer for uh, CBS News. And him and I do free, freelance work on the side. So it was a year-long process of filming and then, you know, some editing th up through that and then another three or four months. Um, so it's just like seven stories, seven really powerful stories, each about 10 minutes long. Michelle's was one of them I just shared. Uh, and just kind of going through their life and sharing the story of, of kind of their, and they each had their own, obviously, like challenge they overcame and different. Yeah. They weren't all similar. So that was, that was one of them. And then. What about from a selfish perspective? You know, growing up, maybe you didn't have, sure. you know, a ton. Yeah. Um, and what are you able to do now? Or what do you, you right. know, well, get for your family or. Yeah. A couple of things. I, I took my sister to the Olympics in, in Vancouver um, I took my brothers to Maui with me, and I like three or four years ago I bought a Z4 BMW, and I was like trying to figure out if I was going to do it or not, and I was like, you know what, this will be a, a symbol for me that like every time I sit in it, it'll remind me because it's one thing to see the numbers in your bank account go up and stuff, but you know it's another thing to kind of have a something to to symbolize it. So. Right. Bought that a few years ago and love it. It's a great car. My mom, I think, loves it even more than me, and she tries to drive it every time she can. But uh, yeah, I think those are those are a few of the, the more selfish things. And I think now, just like being able to go everywhere I travel, I I usually have little mini rallies of Fit Mom for Lifers in different cities. So every city I go to, I usually meet up with two to five or oh, wow. ten people um, who do my DVDs. Um, and that's really cool. Or if I get recognized in an airport, some random airport, and they do my program or whatever. I think those, those things are pretty cool. That's great. So tell us, um, what are some of the daily rituals you have that you find to be most important? Um, I, I, I definitely could improve my, my daily rituals. I get up early every day, but it's sort of kind of forced because I, I still teach um, about 16 to 18 hours a week. People are amazed. I still what teach time is early? So I get up at 4.45. That's um, early. That's yeah. beyond early, yeah. Teach, I teach at 5.30 every day, basically, uh, 5.30 a.m. So my morning ritual is to get up at 4.45. I don't really do much uh, besides that. get out of bed and wash my face and brush my teeth. Um, I mean, I, I try to work out in the morning as well by like 8 or 9. I, I, I enjoy getting my workout in. Then I, you know, I eat well. I was telling you, I've, you know, I've been fortunate enough to, to get a chef. You know, maybe this is something I sh I, we could talk about because people think like having a chef is for like the rich and famous and... Um, you know, I've had one for two years now, and she brings me food um, about once a week, every five days, something like that. And she does all the grocery shopping, she cooks, and and you know, I pay her fifteen dollars an hour, and um, it usually takes her about five hours a week ish. So I pay her about three hundred dollars oh, a month. That's so not bad. Three dollars, three hundred dollars a month. Plus, I think it saves you money because 
you're going to eat out less if you got this food coming to you. She's going to do the shopping for you, so it's going to save you time of shopping and maybe buying some impulse ice cream buys or whatever it is. And, and plus, you're eating healthier too. So right. um, it really isn't as big of a deal or, or as expensive or whatever. You just got to find the right person. So do you have her come over once a week and just cook for the week, or how does it work? Yeah, I, I don't have her cook at my place because I want the mess here. Right. So she cooks it at her place, then she pre-portions everything into like containers, and then she writes up the menu. So I put that menu on my refrigerator, and she usually like corresponds like a number with it so I can see. So, you know, in the containers and stuff, and so she brings, she brings all my, my lunches and dinners and two snacks. And then usually I just make scrambled eggs. So she brings the eggs from the local farm. So we get everything local, grass-fed, free-range, and all that. So Yeah. Now my wife is going to be like, I love Dustin because I'm going to go back and tell her. <laughs> Dustin told me to do this. Yeah, some women don't like it because they, they want to be the one to like cook the food and stuff. No, she will like it. She'll, she'll like it. Yes, yeah, she'll like it for sure. I'll give you credit for it though. Yeah, yeah, I Not me. It. Um, so I have one last question, Dustin, but I want you to tell me, and you talked a little bit about it, where can people find you online? What's, you know, what's exciting lately? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking to a couple things. I'm excited to really like, I'm building a team and building a movement and that's what really excites me. So I've got like five full-time people now that are just on the Fit Moms for Life national stuff, supporting our leaders, um, you know, getting new recruits. And we start with a six-week challenge, it's books and DVD based. And we can do it virtually or in person. And, and so I'm really excited about that. Um, Fit Moms for Life, that's F-O-R, fitmomsforlife.com. And we created a pledge, which I think is one of our most powerful things. It's like a two-minute pledge that women from all over the world are reading. It's kind of a montage. And you can sign up to be part of the pledge and, and stuff. And that's a pretty cool thing. Um, my website, Dustin Maher Fitness, is Dustin Maher, M-A-H-E-R, fitness.com. Um, if people are into Facebook and you want to see how I market on Facebook, um, I've got two different pages, um, two main ones I should say, facebook.com slash I really love being a mom. It's kind of long, but I really love being a mom. We've got over 700,000 moms. Wow. On. Holy cow. Yeah. And then, um, and then our Fit Moms for Life Facebook page is facebook.com slash Fit Moms for Life, F-O-R. And that has like 70 or 80,000 I think on it. And uh, yeah, we just try to add value through our pictures and quotes and videos and whatever else we post up there. This doesn't count as my last question, but I, I have a question yeah. off of that, which is, what do people do to go big with DVDs and other things? Do they go in QVC? What What are they? What, what's the, the ultimate for people? Right. Yeah. I mean, there's you could work with Beachbody or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, they're gonna. I don't know a lot about it to be honest, but they, you know, they'll. They'll kind of basically own you, pretty much, is what I understand. You kind of be, become the talent. I don't want to be like that. Um, QVC could certainly be one. You could go retail. Uh, the margins are a lot slimmer at mm -hmm. that point. Or you can kind of be kind of what I'm doing and, and what Seth Godin teaches is kind of build that tribe and and you know produce you know a little bit higher end content that uh, that certain people you know they could they could spend thirty nine dollars a DVD with me or they can go to to Walmart and get Jillian's for eight bucks or whatever. Um, but they connect with my mission and my vision. They like my workouts and my style. Not to say it's any better or worse than than Jillian's. Certainly, lower production value. I can tell you that much um, than than Jillian's or P90X. But so yeah, those. I think that's that's the main things. I mean, you could go. We're we're kind of going with a direct sales model as well. The leaders they get paid to to run the groups around the world. Um, and once we come up with the supplements and different things, we'll be able to provide leaders with a little bit more. Um, ability to earn income which also excites me yeah so my last question is this dustin i appreciate your time with this yeah. and i do a lot of research ahead of time one yeah. of the things i came across in my research for you is your bucket list so mm -hmm. i wanted to know this year what what do you think you're going to hit on your bucket list oh man um i gotta refresh me on my bucket list yeah so it's on my website somewhere and i encourage everyone to do a bucket list yeah. uh I I'm potentially I still got to figure it out if I'm going, but um, heli skiing in uh, British Columbia. I that, want you to I want you to live though, so I don't know if I <laughs> like that one. I know that's they've got a lot of snow this year, but um, what were some other ones on there? I'm trying to take off the list this year. I I want to definitely start hiking. So f hike all the uh, 14ers, all the 14,000 plus mountains in Colorado. Uh, I definitely want this year to take off like five or seven of those um, off the list, but. 
yeah, some of the traveling. I don't know, some of it got to like Australia and stuff. And right now I'm at a point in my life where I, this year I'm just really focusing on building my business. I've traveled a tremendous amount over the past, I've traveled about 18 times a year um, over the last few years. So wow. <clears throat> I'm only trying to travel the necessary business trips and, and stuff. But um, this year is my focus year of just like honing in. But I want to, I think that I'd like to do the boat. So go 100 miles an hour on a boat this year. That would be a, a good one. What's one that you've done so far that you, are just you know really wowed by yeah I going to the Olympics was pretty special because I've always looked up to the Olympics a lot and um, I got to go I got this is probably one of the coolest things I did the bobsled I bobsledded on the really on the, on the track yeah they let you bobsled <laughs> yes there's only like four places in the world that will let you as a, as a citizen and I got the cool runnings coach from Jamaica yeah, yeah. He, was, he was the driver for ours Wow so how fast are you going on that thing? Uh, we got almost 80. I think oh. it was like 78. They don't let you quite start from the top. Um, and we couldn't push. That was a little bummer. So basically, you're just a passenger. But You can't like do that push off. That's okay. Oh. Yeah, they wouldn't let us do that. But uh, it was pretty the, – the amount of G-forces and the power, especially in that last cur- corner when you're going about 80 miles an hour, is, is amazing. Is so. your stomach just dropping out? <laughs> or? It's, not, it's just like everything's compressed. Like your neck is compressed and – I heard like the pros, they'll only do like five to maybe ten runs at one given time, at a day in a day because it's so hard on their Too body. Much. It's probably you yeah. probably know more about that than me. Yeah. It's your spine and everything, but yeah, so that was a that was pretty awesome. I, yeah, I love that. I saw that and I was like, how can I wow Dustin besides the questions and the conversation? <laughs> and so what I was trying to do was. I wanted to, to cross something off of your bucket list, so I was looking <laughs> oh, to see what I could. So I emailed, re- reached out to Tony Horton several times of, uh, and to see if I'm like, can you Skype in to this <laughs> call because this person has you on their bucket list. And I think I emailed like several different email addresses and it was a long shot, but I, well, I was, I've been I looking this it. whole time to see if someone's, <clears throat> someone's coming in and it hasn't happened. So. Um, I appreciate the effort. Yes, I, I definitely want to meet Tony Horton. I have not not yeah. met him yet, and uh, I so think I was just stalling for like three minutes. I'm like two fifteen to three fifteen Central <laughs> Time. Uh, <laughs> well, hey, if you if it works out later, I would love to. Love yeah, to- I'll I'll have to call you back and Skype you in. But yes. but Dustin, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. You're doing a great job too. Thanks. <laughs>